In this video, I would like to talk about the trigonometric circle. Originally, trigonometric ratios were defined within right angle triangles. If we have a right angle triangle, there are three angles, one of which is a right angle, or in other words, 90 degrees. The other two angles are acute angles. We know that the sum of all of the angles should add up to 180 degrees. If we take 90 degrees to the other side, we see that the sum of the two angles, alpha and beta, is 90 degrees. This means that both alpha and beta are acute. Now, let's consider angle alpha. The side opposite to the angle alpha is shown by OPP, or opposite, and the side adjacent to the angle alpha, but A, D, J, or adjacent. And we also have the hypotenuse, which faces the 90 degree angle. Sine of alpha, for example, as we know, is defined by opposite over hypotenuse. There are a few things we can claim. First of all, sine of alpha is always positive. If alpha is inside a right angle triangle, The second thing we can observe is that we can define the trig ratios for acute angles only. Therefore, originally, people defined the trig ratios for angles which varied between 0 and 90, excluding 0 and 90. Because if one of the angles, let's say alpha or beta, is 0, the other angle has to be 90, and you cannot have a triangle. Therefore, I'll make another statement that alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees in order to be able to define the trig ratios for alpha. This is before the advent of trigonometric circle or other methods to extend the definition of trigonometric ratios to angles which are either less than zero or greater than 90 degrees. The trigonometric circle provides a powerful tool to explain how this extension happens. By definition, it is a circle with radius 1. And it is unitless. So the radius is just 1. There is a horizontal axis which is one of the diameters and then a perpendicular diameter which is a vertical axis. The horizontal axis is called the cosine axis and the vertical axis is called the sine axis. Since the radius of the circle is one unit, 
if we look at these two axes as a coordinate system, then this point would be plus 1, this point would be minus 1 on the cosine axis, and this point would be the plus 1, and this point would be the minus 1 of the sine axis. All angles are measured from this point. This is the zero for measuring angles. If you measure an angle counterclockwise, then the angle is positive. For example, if we start from this point and go counterclockwise to a certain point, that point represents an angle, which is this angle. And this is a positive angle. Now, if we start from the zero for measuring angles and go clockwise to reach a point, then this point corresponds to an angle which would be negative. Let's now consider certain angles on the trigonometric circle. zero degrees would be this point. Then if you move from zero degrees counterclockwise for 90 degrees you will reach this point which is the intersection of the circle with the sine axis. 90 degrees corresponds to this point. If you go counterclockwise by another 90 you will reach this point, 180 degrees. And then if you move another 90 degrees, you will reach this point, which is 270 degrees. Now you can continue by adding 90 degrees to 270 degrees, and you will realize that this point corresponds not only to 0 degrees, but also to 360 degrees. And you can keep adding 90 degrees and so on. You could alternatively start with this point, 0 degrees, go clockwise by 90 degrees. Because you're moving clockwise, in fact, you're adding negative angles. And you would end up this point by minus 90 degrees. Indeed, this point represents both minus 90 degrees and 270 degrees. You could keep going clockwise to reach this point for minus 180 degrees. And that is absolutely all right because this point corresponds to many, many angles, which are all obtained by adding these 90 degrees and rotating around the circle. Therefore, to every angle corresponds one point on the circle only. But to every point on the circle corresponds many angles. Now let's be specific about some other angles. For example, let's look at 30 degrees. 30 degrees is one-third of 90 degrees. And I know that 0 degrees and 90 degrees are located where they are located on the circle. If I divide the arc connecting 0 degrees and 90 degrees into three equal parts, then I can find the point corresponding to the angle 30 degrees. 
Now, in order to find the sine and cosine of this angle, you can draw a horizontal line so that you reach the sine axis. The distance between the point of intersection and zero is actually sine 30 degrees. Since it, it is above the zero of this coordinate system, it is a positive quantity. From the figure, therefore, I can see that sine of 30 degrees, because 30 degrees falls in the first quadrant, is a positive quantity. In order to find the cosine of 30 degrees, from this point, draw a line perpendicular to the cosine axis. The distance between the point of intersection and the center of the circle is cosine of 30 degrees. Now why we believe so is because if you connect these two points, you will get a triangle. Since the radius is 1, the adjacent over radius is equal to the adjacent itself. Therefore, cosine of 30 degrees would be equal to the actual length that you see here has been highlighted from this point to this point. Therefore, the trigonometric circle provides a tool to, for visualizing the actual values of sine and cosine of different angles. Now let's choose an angle which is in the second quadrant. Let's say somewhere here. In order to find the sine of this angle, I call it alpha, I will draw a line from alpha perpendicular to the sine axis until I hit the sine axis. The distance between the point of intersection and the center of the coordinate system is sine alpha. And it happens to be positive because it is above the x-axis or the sine axis. To find the cosine of alpha, draw a line perpendicular to the cosine axis and the distance between the point of intersection and the center would give you the value of cosine alpha. Now we note that the zigzag line is to the left of zero of the origin of the coordinate system. Because of that, it must have a negative value. In the second quadrant, therefore, sine alpha is positive, but cosine alpha is negative. You can continue this and investigate the sine of cosine and the sine of sine alpha, whether they're positive or negative, for different quadrants. This provides a very fast and quick tool for finding the signature whether they're positive or negative, of trigonometric ratios. Now I would like to talk about the tangent axis. If this is a trig circle with the horizontal and vertical cosine and sine axis, the tangent axis is a straight line which is tangent to the circle at the zero and parallel to the sine axis. Let's say you have a an angle in the fourth quadrant. Let's show it by alpha. For example, 300 degrees. 300 degrees would fall in the fourth quadrant. In order to show, to visualize the tangent of this angle, you would connect alpha to the center of the 
coordinate system and continue the line until you hit the tangent axis. Now, since the point we found is below zero, it is a negative quantity. This distance would be tangent of alpha. And because it is below zero, it would be a negative quantity. Therefore, if alpha is in the fourth quadrant, tangent of alpha would be negative. Now, why is this length tangent of alpha? It may be worth explaining. The reason is that opposite over adjacent for the angle alpha in this case becomes just the opposite because adjacent would be equal to 1, which is the radius. And that's why we believe this distance is equal to tangent of alpha. We can also discuss a cotangent axis, which can be drawn as easily as a tangent axis, but because it doesn't have as many applications, we avoid it here. This concludes our review of the trigonometric circle.